This video will be a basic intro to matrices. So a matrix is a two-dimensional rectangular array of scalar values. So a scalar was a quantity that just had, had magnitude only, so like A11 is a scalar. A vector was a quantity that had both magnitude and direction, direction that we represented by an array of scalars. So this first column here might be a vector. And a matrix is one that has two dimensions of values. So here in a matrix, if we have the matrix A, which I can indicate by boldface uh, A here, or A with two underlines, indicating that it has two dimensions, just as we did one underline for a vector with one dimension. So what are the properties here? So it's filled with these values here, which are scalar values. It has n columns, so columns 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., all the way up to column n. And it has m rows, rows 1, 2, etc., all the way down to row m. So if this is the case, this is an m by n matrix, we would say. Number of rows by number of columns. So it has m rows, n columns, and n times n, as it's rectangular, total elements. Each of these are an element. a21, amn, am2, those are all elements. So all of these elements are going to, in general, be complex numbers. They, we could have a matrix of real numbers. We could have a matrix of all imaginary numbers. But in general, they're allowed to be complex, have both real and imaginary components. And this a m n is the element in row m and column n. So the first, the first subscript indicates what row it's in, and the second subscript indicates what column it's in. Remember, rows going across, columns going down. All right, so what are some uh, useful things we can do with matrices? So just as with vectors, uh, we can add matrices together. So what happens when we add a matrix A and a matrix B? So we'll have A plus B component ij of matrix i plus matrix b is going to be aij plus b ij so for a matrix you have to you're just taking the individual components and you're adding them together when you're adding two matrices so this means that we must have We must have the number of columns of A equal the number of columns of B and the number of rows of A equal to the number of rows of B. So if these matrices do not have both the same dimensions in the number of columns and the number of rows, then we cannot add them together. So in order to be added, that must be the case. So just to write that out a little bit more. A little bit more clearly in terms of the matrix elements. So this A matrix A plus B, because A plus B is now a new matrix, is going to equal A11 plus B11, A21 plus B21, A12 plus B12, A22 plus B22. Those are the first four elements in the first two rows and columns. And then that will extend beyond there out to the total length of the matrix in both dimensions. So these dots are just indicating that it continues on until a given point. So continuing on from there, the notation continues. All right, what about matrix scalar multiplication? We want to multiply a matrix times a scalar value. So what if we have alpha times a? What are the components of that? And that, luckily, just as with matrices, or just as with vectors, works out to be the same as well. You just multiply each individual element by alpha. So if I have alpha times A, that's going to be alpha A11, alpha A12, etc., alpha A21, alpha a22 and etc in all the dimensions that we go for our matrix
All right, that's matrix scalar multiplication. You can multiply any scalar times any matrix. A scalar doesn't have any any magnet doesn't have any direction, so you can just multiply any scalar times any matrix you like. No restrictions or special rules there. All right, matrix vector multiplication. So we can multiply a matrix times a vector. Here's where order starts to matter. All right, so I guess we can say we have a let's say we have a vector called D. So what is the result of A times D? So this is a matrix times a vector, and the result that we're going to get out is going to be a vector. So what is this going to be? So the components of that vector, component I, will equal sum over J, A I J times D J. All right, so what do we what is what does this look like if we kind of represent this out? So we have our matrix A and its columns, however many columns it happens to have. And we have our vector D. And this is going to equal some new vector. Let me put dots for the individual components of that vector. So if I want to get the first element of this vector, according to this formula, what I do is I multiply the first element of the first row times the first element of D, then the next one times the next one, the next one times the next one, going down the row and down the column, and then sum up all of those products in order to get the first element here. For the second one, I multiply and sum the second row times the times the vector again. Third one, I multiply the third row times the column vector, fourth row times column vector, etc. until I've gone down all of my elements here. So what does this mean as far as restrictions for the elements here? This means that the number of columns of A equals the number of elements of D because if they don't have the same number of columns as D has elements then there's not going to be an, a, an, a correct number of things to multiply together in order to satisfy this sum here because you'll have you'll have hanging values on one or another so D D has a, has a given number of elements which has to equal the number of columns of A but then if this vector is E for example the result so let's say A times D equals the vector E now E so the number of rows of A equals the number of elements of E so if A is not square if M doesn't equal N if A is not square then E and D are gonna have a different number of elements so only if A is square are the same number of elements going to be present in E as there are in D. Okay, so that's an introduction to matrix vector multiplication. So now that leads us to matrix matrix multiplication, which is the extension of this idea, but for the case that there's more than one uh, column going on here. So if we have a matrix C, which is defined as the product of A and B, so let's say C equals A times B. Then what does C, what are the components of C? So Cij equals a sum over K of A, I, K, B, K, J. So let's see that represented out in terms of what that means. So if we have A here, and here are the individual rows of A going across. And then we have B and its columns, however many of those there are. Then we're going to have C and all of its individual elements that result. So if I want the element IJ of C, then I take the ith row of A and I take the ith column of B and for each of those elements in, in row I and column J, 
I'm going to multiply each of the elements together and then add them up and the result is going to be an element within C. So this means that my restriction for what has to be equal here is I have to have that the number of columns of A equals the rows of B. So if I don't have, just as with the vector matrix vector multiplication, if I don't have the same number of columns and rows in A and B, then I can't multiply them together. If I have, and then the number of elements I'm going to have in C, because notice it's Cij, it's going to have as many rows as A had, and it's going to have as many columns as B had. So if these matrices aren't square, if they're not both n by n, then there's going to, you're going to have to pay attention to how many columns and rows are going to result for C. Okay, so that's the basics of matrices, uh, what they are, how you do things like add and multiply them to scalars, vectors, and other matrices.